Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Troy Bell. I'm a JIU doctoral candidate. Uh, today we will be going over uh, my dissertation topic, which is entitled Effective Strategies to Teach Af African American Students from the Administrator and Teacher Perspective. Uh, we will have an overview of uh, topics that we will go over today. Um, so basically, I have three years and 200 pages uh, to, go, to go over in 30 minutes. So uh, I look forward to doing that. Um, uh, the overview of my presentation, we will talk about the statement of the problem, we will talk about the purpose, the research questions, also the significance of the study. We will talk about limitations. We will briefly go through the literature review. Uh, we will talk about the methodology, participants, data collection and data analysis, results and findings, then get into the discussion, the implications, recommendations, and further research. Before we get into the statement of the problem, and I just want to give you a little background of why I felt this was very important as a topic for me to, um, to research. Um, being an African American a male, um, there, there, were, there were things that happened as I grew up along these same lines that I'm going to be discussing that as an adult now really had me go back and think as to why is it that African American students uh, lag so poorly behind their counterparts? Um, is it the fact that they're not getting uh, the attention uh, uh, addressing their, their learning needs? Is it that teachers aren't trying to really establish relationships? Is it that uh, the cultural aspect is not being tied in so that you know, we can see relevance into why is it that what that teacher is, is, is on the blackboard teaching important for me to know and understand? So that's uh, really the main crux of why I wanted to delve in to this particular dissertation topic uh, because uh, it, it, it bothers me when I always hear that African-American students are the lowest in standardized test scores. That bothers me. So I wanted to go back and research and find out, okay, what if we did this? How is it that that could possibly change and we go up north instead of remaining uh, at the lower tier? Uh, the same problem, basically the problem being investigated is whether or not teachers are using effective strategies to teach African-American students in a specific urban Texas school district. Uh, Darlin and Hammond and Barry assert that uh, African-American students will not achieve success until school leadership uh, addresses uh, the, the teachers who both know the content of what is taught and how to teach to the specific cell culture. Uh, the purpose of my study uh, was to identify strategies that teachers use to successfully teach African-American students in a specific urban Texas school district. Um, the study identified through data collection and analysis categories of themes from which granted theory may emerge. Uh, there were two research questions that uh, guided the study. Uh, the first research question, what strategies do teachers, what strategies do teachers use to successfully teach African American students in a specific urban Texas school district? And the second uh, question that guided this study uh, was, what common characteristics do teachers who successfully teach African American students have? Uh, the study uh, yielded several areas for, that were of significance. Uh, the first one was uh, the study yielded data to identify strategies which were effective in teaching African American students. Uh, differentiating instruction, small group, hands-on learning, lesson planning, all those were effective strategies that were deemed essential in helping, uh, in helping increase the learning needs of African American students. The second, the study provided useful information that applied effective teaching strategies. Um, this is something that can go forward in, in the area of education. Uh, this is something that if it's not being utilized in other areas and other classrooms and campuses throughout, throughout our nation, uh, this is something that could uh, uh, be used as reliable literature toward improving the academic achievement of African American students. The third, the study revealed best practices that could assist administrators and teachers in performing their jobs more effectively. Uh, the more we know, the better we can help assist our students in achieving their academic goals, which is uh, obviously to attain uh, a, a diploma. Um, when teachers, administrators, 
uh, we're, we're, we're continual learners. We have to be on the cutting edge of what's out there that will benefit and assist students in increasing student achievement. Lastly, the study identified teacher effectiveness as a vital component in motivating African American students. Um, as teachers, we know more than the students that come into our classrooms. We're the professional, that means we're the expert. So in order to motivate student athletes, uh, I believe it was Neely that's, that uh, commented in my study that you have to really give African American students uh, uh, work that allows them to think, okay? You have to really increase their critical thinking skills. That, motive, that will in turn motivate them to want to be a part of what you have uh, to divulge for their learning. Uh, no African American student should ever receive work that doesn't uh, increase their cognitive thought. The limitations, uh, sampling design was purposive in nature. Uh, that was intentional. I wanted to look at administrators and teachers, people who have experience in, uh, in sharing the same experiences and narratives and the same phenomena. Uh, the study was not to be generalized beyond the district involved, investigated. Uh, the study was not, to, not able to control nor predict the narratives and views of the participants. Uh, the results and findings were only interpreted uh, by the researcher. Uh, to control for the setup and the parameters for this study, uh, the study only interviewed administrators and teachers uh, for this study. Uh, they were the unit of analysis. Also, only the narratives and experiences of the participants were considered for the study. Before I go into the literature review, I wanted to kind of briefly run through the theoretical framework. Uh, the theoretical framework for my study was culturally relevant pedagogy, pragmatism, and constructivism. Um, since the study focused on identifying strategies uh, that teachers use to successfully teach African American students uh, in a specific urban Texas school district, culturally relevant pedagogy was the main theoretical element. Uh, the study also used Jordan, Ir Jordan Irvine's definition of culturally relevant pedagogy, which states a culturally, re a culturally relevant pedagogy is based on the premise that learning differs, may differ across cultures. And since teachers uh, can enhance student success uh, by acquiring knowledge of the cultural backgrounds of their students, they can then translate this knowledge into their instructional practice. Pragmatism deals with the ways of knowing. Um, constructivism is, is also, it ties old, new information with old, therefore it informs the uh, student's uh, educational foundation. The, the five, there were five subtopics in the literature review. Uh, I'll, I'll, list the to I'll name the topics. Uh, one was differentiated instruction. Uh, the second was teacher self-efficacy. The third was culturally responsive teaching. The fourth was motivating African American students. And the fifth was teacher preparation programs. Uh, in differentiated instruction, the purpose of differentiated instruction is to ensure that all students get it. And by that I mean, they are able to comprehend the information, okay? Um, anytime you differentiate, it was, it was expressed throughout all the narratives, anytime you differentiate for a child, uh, you're using uh, a, a different assessment tool. Uh, whether it's group, whether it's hands-on, whether it's uh, lesson planning, everything you do for a particular student is, is it, uh, it, to help them understand the concepts of what is being taught is a form of differentiated instruction. And all of my, uh, my narratives from my participants supported this, this assumption. Uh, the next was teacher self-efficacy. Uh, the idea behind this is that African American students need teachers to make evident their enthusiasm and appropriate belief, as well as uh, displaying support in their efforts toward achieving success. Um, Basically, the definition of self-advocacy is being able to successfully complete a certain act or project. Uh, based on my study, you know, it was based on you know, successfully completing a certain uh, act in regards to student outcomes. 
culturally responsive teaching. Uh, the idea here is that effective, strat effective teachers and the ineffective teachers do not share the same qualities. And I believe that was by Manner. Um, and Jacob also said the only way that we find out who's effective or not effective is to wait until the teaching begins. Um, basically, culturally responsive teaching is adding uh, student background information into the new information to contextualize their learning experience. Motivating African American students. Uh, as, Rensler, as Rensler said in my study, this is a great mystery. Um, and it's, it's something that, you know, as teachers, we, we step into uh, the, you know, we step into the trenches every day with students. And it's already there in order for us to have to ascertain, you know, what makes this, make, what makes this student uh, want it and, and why come this student doesn't want it. So uh, it's a great mystery. Uh, the idea here is African-American students want to know how is this going to be relevant in their day-to-day -day life. Uh, you have to tie in that cultural component. I believe it was Jordan Irvine that stated, teachers who understand cultural pedagogy know how to use a student's background information to enhance their learning opportunity. Uh, there was a study that was mentioned, uh, that I mentioned in, the, uh, in my dissertation, uh, that was uh, taught, entitled Biography Driven Instructional Practices. And in that study, uh, students were grouped, okay? And they were grouped together uh, throughout the whole process, but they had to uh, cut out sheets of paper and they had to write down specific words that, uh, a, a, like a new vocabulary word each day. And they built up these foldables, which is what it turned into, so scaffold their learning, they built it up so that they were then to go and research the word, know the definition, and then apply it in a sentence format. So now, here we, here we go again. They're active participants in the learning process. They're not uh, sitting back just listening to rote recall memory uh, on, on memorization skills, but they're actually involved in the learning process, which in turn will increase their appetite, thus their motivation to want to learn more about uh, the concepts that they're being required to of the teacher. Uh, in addition, uh, when the students completed the assignment, the students were then, in, they were then to interact with their peers with what they had learned. So now you have that small group element. And I believe it was Ferriello in my paper that talked about uh, small groups are a great uh, teaching tool because it's the one tool that allows black students to divulge what they know. So grouping was used throughout, and this allowed for students to expand on connections between the personal experiences and the new information. Again, that's a constructivist theory there. It's talking about uh, applying new information with O and then coming to a conclusion. Uh, the analysis of the uh, study uh, detailed where teachers that utilize the BDI strategies yielded significant increases in student achievement than for teachers who did not. And also through the interview process, through the interview data, uh, the study also revealed that teachers found BDI strategies to be effective tools for improving the learning outcomes of diverse student populations. So there again, that confirms that when students are come together and they're a group, collaborative group or cooperative learning, whichever you want to call it, uh, they have a tendency to learn more from each other and it becomes not just a student to teach, stu uh, teacher centered, but now it now becomes student centered and now they begin to share what they know among the group. Uh, the last literature review uh, was teacher, prep teacher preparation programs. Uh, the idea here is that it is counterintuitive with systemic, systemic policies and practices match students uh, with the greatest needs with teachers lacking the specific training needed to meet their needs. Uh, this happens all the time in education. Um, there needs to be, uh, based on the narratives, uh, one of my participants talked about the fact that there, there's a, there, there needs to be better recruitment. There needs to be uh, a recruitment of, of more Hispanic, of more African-American teachers. Uh, uh, African-American teachers only make up 6% of the education or teaching force, whereas 90% of the educational uh, teaching force is, is uh, white. Um, the Hispanics make up even less. I think they're right at 3%. So he says recruitment needs to be there where you actually have teachers uh, that can go into schools and, and students can now see uh, educators that look like them. 
Not saying that you have to be black or Hispanic to teach students of color, but the cultural component needs to be uh, addressed so that uh, positive relationships can be built and teachers uh, can now uh, see sustainable increases in student achievement. Okay, we're going to talk about methodology. Um, in talking about the methodology, I really want to talk about the trustworthiness of my study. Uh, there were three, I used three uh, strategies. Uh, one strategy was the in-depth interview. The other strategy, uh, the other tool was questionnaire. And the third one was a document analysis. Uh, in the in-depth in, in in interview process, it really allowed for me to gather the rich, thick, descriptive information uh, from, from my participants. Uh, they were very candid, as I mentioned earlier. I couldn't have asked for a better group. Um, the questionnaire allowed for me to uh, uh, differentiate the uh, cultural perspectives of my uh, participant group, as well as uh, maintain their confidentiality. I looked at education. I looked at years of experience. I looked at uh, the, 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 the core subject that they taught. So that really allowed me to uh, also differentiate uh, if they received any training on cultural diversity uh, as it pertained to, uh, to their years of experience. Uh, it was observed uh, or noted that all participants had a diverse background uh, in their teaching career uh, based on uh, the questionnaire. Uh, lastly, the document analysis, um, I looked at the uh, the district information. I looked at the PEAMS data, which stands for the Public Education Information Management System. I looked at the AEIS report, which stands for Academ Academic Excellency Indicator System. And then I looked at the teacher data information that was provided, that was provided to me by the administrators who were part of my study. That, and that was for the teachers to be, to meet the criteria to be involved in my study. It came through administrators. Okay. So um, I really feel that everything uh, the, you know, dependability, transferability, credibility, uh, really, really is, 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 is accurate for my study. And I believe that it will be representative of uh, the outcomes and the findings. Again, my participants, uh, initially I sent out 30 emails. I only received 14 responses back. So 14 participants volunteered to be a part of my study. Uh, 10 were women, 4 were men. Uh, their range of experience ranged from 5 to 33 years. Uh, I mentioned earlier, 7 participants uh, said they had received some form or type of cultural diversity training. The other half did not. However, all experienced, uh, have experience in working with diverse student populations. Uh, data collection. Uh, uh, the face-to-face -face interview was the primary method of being collecting my data. Uh, the first interview was a pilot study. I did uh, meet with a participant and, uh, you know, uh, in my initial consent form, you know, we talked about 45 to 60 minutes of your time. Well, we finished the interview in less than 20 minutes. So that led me uh, to believe maybe it was the questions or it could be something else. So I really wanted to look at it. Um, I assess the effectiveness of the interview and the clarification of the interview process. And basically what it turned out is that in a qualitative study, you can't control the narratives of the participants. You don't know what they're going to say. All you can control is, uh, you know, the, the asking the question. And once I asked a question, I probed for thought and uh, got more clarity uh, uh, as the interview went on. But uh, again, the location was at the discretion of the participants. and. Uh, Everything was digitally, the, the interview was digitally recorded and transcribed uh, for uh, looking through the schema. Uh, data analysis. In the data, in the data analysis, uh, the narratives of the participants were analyzed and coded to ensure accuracy of information uh, while checking for emergent themes and categories in order to assemble the information toward an understanding of effective strategies and characteristics. Uh, I did purchase a software system, the QSR in, in Vivo 10. Uh, it was used to check for word frequency in reading the narratives of the participants. In addition, the QSR 
allow for storage of information so the study could go back and pull information when matching the narratives uh, that were similar in theme. Uh, one example I would give is the word relationship. It was, uh, it was very common throughout all of my, my interviews that the word relationship was in every one of them. They said you have to establish relationships with African American students because it's a trust issue. And what I would just punch in relationships and I mean everything would just pop up on the screen. It was like I got a thousand hits. So that led me to believe that again, uh, the, the software was doing this, it, it was serving this purpose so that I could look for coherent themes and see what emerged. Uh, the validity of my data, it was committee approved instrument, uh, probing questions to clarify. Uh, I, had a professional, uh, I hired a professional transcription service. Um, I used the school district's website to verify my, uh, to, to verify uh, the schools to, that would meet the criteria to be involved in the study. So I really believe that trustworthiness was established in my study. And participants all answered the same identical questions. Okay, now we're going to get to the meat of uh, the presentation, the results. There were 13 themes that emerged. One, differentiated instruction. I like to preface this by letting you know the first five themes that I'm going to mention here as the first research question, which is what strategies do teachers use to successfully teach African American students in a specific urban Texas school district? The first of the five is uh, differentiated instruction. Uh, the majority of participants agree that in order to successfully meet the needs of all students, teachers would have to vary their delivery of instruction. Theme number two, make learning revenue make learning relevant. Uh, the importance of adding cultural relevancy when working with African American students uh, was mentioned uh, by four out of five of the administrators. Uh, in contrast, among the teachers, only five out of nine participants uh, actually used the word relevance. However, the others who, who were also in agreement, but they used the word connect learning uh, to express concern in working with African American students. So the bottom line is you must tie that culturally uh, relevant piece in when working with African American students if you're wanting to ensure that they're engaged in the learning process. Uh, the third thing was lesson planning. Okay, uh, The importance of lesson planning when instructing African American students was, uh, was, was considered an essential element. Um, and another thing in regards to lesson planning obviously is regardless of ethnicity. Uh, students' needs were mainly viewed the same across the board. Uh, basically what they were saying is a struggling African-American kid could be just like a struggling uh, a white kid or like a struggling Hispanic kid. Uh, they saw their needs uh, not being any different. So uh, the lesson planning was always based on uh, the learning needs of all students in mind. Uh, the fourth theme, hands-on learning. Uh, and hands-on learning was viewed as an essential uh, element in answering the, 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 the first research question. Um, the majority of participants felt that African American students uh, do not respond to being lectured to for long periods of time. Um, one of my participants even mentioned, you know, you gotta, get, you gotta let them do something. He said maybe the first 15 minutes, you know, you can talk to them and, and let them know what they're about to do, but then you gotta let them move. You gotta let them throw something, toss something, do something. And then you can, come, then you can bring them back because still the content has to be taught. But you gotta let them uh, express themselves uh, in diverse ways in order to get what, what you're wanting to get from them. And the last uh, theme to answer that answers question one was uh, small groups. Uh, small groups uh, was considered an effective strategy, uh, but it was also noted like a paradigm shift uh, because it wasn't something that had to be performed daily, but it was considered an asset for those who knew how to effectively engage students in the process of completing certain tasks. Uh, I had one of my uh, participants mention that, you know, that, uh, the new teachers that are coming in, they just think you just put all kids in a group, and that's group work, and it's more to it than that. It has to be structured. It has to have a purpose. It has to be in, in, intentional. So that you you know you, you you give people certain roles you know 
Certain kids are auditory. Certain kids are kinesthetic. Certain kids are visual. You know, you, you make sure that each of that is in the groups so that everybody has a role to play. And that's when kids, again, they become empowered to take uh, authority over their own learning. Okay, these next set of themes, it'll be a total of eight themes, uh, will answer the next research question, which is research question number two, what common characteristics do teachers who successfully teach Af African American students have? Uh, theme six was setting high expectations. As one of my participants said it, and, and this person was very enthusiastic when she said it, she said high expectations, set high expectations from the door. Okay, so I, I knew that to mean um, she believed that all students can learn, and she was not going to take no for an answer. Uh, uh, the next thing, uh, build authentic relationships. Um, again, this came up on my QSR and Vivo 10, like I had a thousand hits on a YouTube video. Uh, relationship building is considered essential in working with African American students. Uh, the importance of positive of establishing positive relationships uh, when working with African American students was was mentioned by all the participants in my study. Um, as one participant uh, mentioned in my study, if you're not going to build relationships with students, you're not going to reach our kids. He was talking about black kids. The next thing, provide students with exposure to increase background knowledge. Uh, the majority of the participants uh, discussed strategies that were used to support their stance in regard to exposing students to more than that than they would be relegated to receive it at home. Um, uh, throughout my study, uh, when this question came about, uh, I had participants that would say, I have kids that don't go no further than 10 miles radius from their home. It's home to school, school back home, maybe to a relative's house, then back home, then back to school, and that's pretty much how they travel. Uh, they, they're, not, uh, they're not privileged enough to just travel uh, long uh, distances away and, and also you know, grab hold of those different, uh, ex experience those different uh, stimuli that their counterparts experience on a daily basis. Theme number nine, uh, establishing motivational techniques to spur student interest. Again, uh, all participants perceive the benefits of motivating students, uh, but they also perceive the barriers or issues associated with trying to establish this worthwhile cause. Um, certain kids just don't want to learn. However, it's still our job to find a way to motivate that child to want to learn and take ownership for their learning. Again, as Neely stated, you have to engage them in the learning process. No African American student or any child for, for that matter should ever have uh, to look at information that doesn't make them have to think on a cognitive level. Ten, ability to grow students. Um, you know, the participants in my study, you know, they agreed uh, that knowledge of content and ability to implement that uh, knowledge to the first students uh, was central to effectively uh, teaching all students. Uh, you have to find out what's their, what, what's their interest. I had one participant says, I first find out what they're interested in, and that's when I know how to motivate them, because he believed that interest came before motivation. So in the same sense here, um, you, you, you got to get, you got to think outside the box, you have to get out of your comfort zone, and, uh, and you know, I even had, an, an, and just to talk about that part, that cultural aspect, I had one participant talk about, does the teacher feel comfortable with that? Can they understand that? Can they deal with that, okay? And that's the putting the uh, dealing more with teacher self-efficacy and, and, and are they able and willing to step outside of themselves to uh, get to know that student and then uh, you know, assess their learning needs either through data 
or through other various assessments uh, to bring that student where that student needs to be to bring them up. Uh, 11, theme 11 was care. Obviously, uh, care was one of the, the deciding factors of teachers wanting to get into the profession in the first place. Uh, they wanted to make a difference in the lives of students. Um, pretty much all of our participants, the majority, uh, expounded on teachers who show love and care for all students. Uh, the importance of showing genuine love and care for students uh, was a common thread amongst the participants. Um, as one of my participants uh, mentioned in the uh, study, you have to love kids. You just have to love kids. Regardless of where they come from, regardless of their background, you have to love kids. Regardless of their attitudes, you have to love kids. Uh, theme 12, uh, engage students through use of various assessments. Uh, it was noted in the literature that by guarantee that African American students thrive. They literally thrive when they have uh, a variety of assessments uh, at their beck and call. Uh, several, several of my participants provided commentary regarding student engagement uh, of the learning process and holding students accountable for their learning. You know, if you engage students through various assessments, that means you're giving them food for thought. That means they're engaged in the curriculum, they're not sitting by as passive observers. So at this, it, is, it is at this point where you have them where you want them. Now you have to reel them in by continually adding to, to their supply of want. Because now it becomes, a, uh, it, it, it becomes uh, in like supply and demand, okay? If you, if you feed them something that's interesting, they're gonna want more of it. Lastly, high self-efficacy uh, was deemed a common trait that teachers share in successfully teaching African-American students. Uh, several of my participants talked on the, talked commented on the scope and sequence of self-efficacy uh, from the teacher perspective. Uh, it was perceived that teachers with high self-efficacy were not afraid to push students to do their best and they would not take no for an answer. In other words, you believe all students can learn and you have a classroom uh, ready and available when they walk in. You know, you, 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 you're showing them the respect and you're showing them that you care because you're prepared. We will now go into the discussion. Here is talking about the various strategies that teachers use to successfully teach African American students along with common characteristics that they share. In the information, uh, based on the findings, and I also have the literature that confirms uh, the findings, it's a teacher's role in getting to know and relate to their students. You have to know the students in your care. You have to know students in your care. And actually, you also have to, you, have, you need to go outside the classroom as well, because you have students that do extracurricular things. And it's, a, it's an old cliche uh, that's, I don't know who the author is, but it talks in the uh, cliche that uh, kids don't listen to what you say, they listen to what you do, okay? So it's the doing that's the most important. There's another cliche that's in the book, uh, talks about you hear, you forget, you see, you remember, you do, you understand. The most important of the three is the doing, okay? So what are you doing to get to know your students? Because it's more than just roll call. Uh, in addition, the findings uh, uh, confirm that African-American students, you know, have not achieved at the level desired in the public school system, okay? And a lot of that could, could go back to the fact that there's no, there's no relationship. There's no, no, there's no positive relationship. There's, there's nothing authentic about uh, the relationship between teacher and student. Additionally, uh, utilizing the appropriate resources to meet individual student needs, okay? Again, lesson planning. Uh, looking at the data. Uh, uh, another uh, literature review that will support that uh, finding. Uh, school leadership must rethink pedagogy and practices in addressing the learning needs of African American students. Okay? It, it, it has to uh, go hand in hand. 
curriculum and pedagogy has to go hand in hand. The epistemology of the teachers, it has to be aligned and you know there has to be some tweaking involved, but that's that cultural eye that I mentioned earlier. Another one would be teachers must be the catalyst in setting high expectations, which is what we just talked about. Uh, effective teachers set high expectations for all students. Okay, that's what the literature confirms. They value student, respect their expect they, they value they value student expectations uh, by linking them to the curriculum and providing. Uh, the right amount of support to ensure student mastery. Okay, the implications. Again, uh, this is what was uh, based on the narratives and the themes and the literature review. This is what came out of uh, my study. Uh, one of the findings that that kind of threw my assumption out of the window was the fact that uh, the curriculum should be the same for every student regardless of ethnicity. Uh, and the reason I say that is because I know when we have, uh, you know, ESL classes for, you know, students that come from, you know, Mexico and, and other parts of the country, uh, and they have a special, a specialized curriculum to ensure that they understand, you know, how to speak a second language. So my assumption was that maybe for African American students, uh, there needs to be something specialized, but as it turned out, that wasn't the case. Um, another, in the, in the uh, literature supported that assertion, uh, Bainbridge and lastly uh, commented, uh, black children do not need specialized instruction, okay? Uh, but they do need teachers who vary their instructional approaches to make learning more culturally relevant for them. So that in itself brought me back into understanding that, okay, if I tie my old information that I already currently know in with the new information, then I can build upon my own personal foundation of knowledge. Uh, another uh, implication uh, in the findings was that African American students thrive on positive relationships, okay? And the literature supported that, 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 that finding. Uh, it was Johnson and McElroy that stated uh, the authentic relationship uh, allows for students to become active, excuse me, excuse me there, I need probably a little water. <clears throat> it allows for students to become active uh, participants rather than passive observers. So again, you build that relationship uh, with the teacher, the student-teacher relationship. Uh, now you can go forward and you can really uh, get them to where they need to be uh, in their their learning, and I'll say one more. Uh, an effective teacher is a teacher who comes prepared, who loves what they are doing. Okay, that was part of the findings, and the research literature that supported that was the fact that uh, regardless of tenure, a teacher should always be looking. To better for better ways to teach uh, the curriculum. So again, it's continual. We're continual learners, and in order for uh, us to maintain our effectiveness with students, we have to be looking for uh, cutting edge ways to stay ahead of the curve, and to always look to increase student achievement. Okay. Uh, the title here is Administrator and Teacher Perspectives Addressing Effective Strategies. Again, I'll just go over them again. One was differentiating instruction. The second was making learning relevant. The third was lesson planning. The fourth was hands-on activities. And the fifth was small groups. Those are the five uh, uh, themes that came out as a result of the narratives and that the literature supported in uh, addressing and answering question number one. Recommendation, <sighs> we're almost there. Recommendation, uh, based on the literature and based on the narratives and themes that emerged, engaging, having an engaging curriculum was of the utmost importance. You know, you have to have an engaging curriculum to keep the attention spans of your students, to have them want to take ownership in the learning process. Uh, culturally relevant teaching is to be seamlessly integrated into the curriculum. Uh, the second one was common planning period, okay? Um, one, of my one of my participants uh, stated in her 
narrative that I would like to get with other teachers. You got to talk to your colleagues. You got to find out why is Johnny struggling in your class, or why is Johnny not struggling in your class, but he's struggling in my class. What is it that you're doing that's working, and what am I not doing? In other words, they learn amongst each other and they share what they know. They share what works. They share what doesn't work, and it allows that teacher to go back. And plus, it increases their their self-efficacy in addressing the learning needs of Johnny. Uh, the third was hands-on learning. Again. Rote memorization, lecture, stand and deliver is not going to work with African American students. And I don't really think it works for any, for any student of that, for that matter. You're going to have to give kids opportunities to show what they know in diverse ways. You know, like one of my uh, participants talked about uh, in the narratives, he said, hey, in math, you know, you have to use, manip use manipulatives. In science, you've got to do more in lab. In social studies, you have to make it relevant. Th those are the areas uh, that were were discussed in, in involving hands-on learning because as one of my other participants stated, it's just that when they use certain objects, it's like they, they think more outside of the box and they, it's like they, they come alive. So uh, that is why uh, hands-on learning was considered an essential element in working with African American students. Uh, make learning relevant. There has to be tie-in, okay? Uh, culturally responsive teachers uh, appreciate student uh, hobbies, not just, you know, on campus, but outside of campus, and they go and support them. As one of my participants mentioned, he said, if you could just go to a basketball game or a football game and just wave at one of your particular students, if they see you there, that, do, that does wonders for them coming back to your classroom, because now you can have dialogue. You can talk about how they did in the football game, or, hey, I saw you make that tackle, or, hey, I saw you score that layup, and those are positives. And at that point, you start to build that, that, that relationship piece that we've talked about throughout uh, this dissertation uh, process. And now you, you can really uh, increase their learning opportunities. And uh, lastly, uh, the recommendations, uh, cultural diversity training. Uh, we all need to embrace culture, okay? Uh, whether it's all white kids in a the room, there's culture in the room. Whether it's all black kids in the room, there's culture in the room. But when you blend in all cultures, it becomes multicultural. So understanding and, and appreciating the differences assembled in your classroom uh, will go a long way in increasing student achievement as well as student engagement in the learning process. Uh, suggestions for further research. Um, uh, effective strategies to teach African American students in an urban Texas school district would be uh, for a replication within a larger sample, uh, as it would be desirable to study effective strategies uh, to teach African American students and how they correlate with the achievement of these students. Another one was uh, a useful study would be to assess the implementation, excuse me, implementation uh, of single gender classes. I had one participant uh, talk explicitly in regards to, you know, I've never taught in a single gender school, but I have been in a single gender class, and uh, this person thought it was amazing. She said, you know, it cuts down on uh, extraneous talk, interruptions, uh, you know, a boy trying to impress a girl, a girl, and vice versa. It really curved down on their uh, behavior in the classroom. Uh, another was a, a longitudinal study uh, could maybe possibly be used. Uh, uh, to sample first year and tenured administrators and teachers uh, and follow them through the first five to ten years uh, of the, in, the, in the profession. Again, um, you, you're trying to find out uh, you know, the rep, how, this, how my particular study can be represented in other studies and I do believe that the findings here uh, will show that everything uh, will show proper and appropriate representation uh, for my study. Uh, a similar study could be conducted by gender and within a content area. Okay, we're basically uh, at the end. Uh, final thought, uh, and I'll just read uh, a quote I got from Ernest Hemingway. It's, it is good to have an end to journey toward, but it is the journey that matters in the end. Okay. Uh, on a personal note, uh, this dissertation 
uh, process of trying to get a terminal degree has not come with its ups and downs and some hiccups along the way and some setbacks and some fr frustrations and, and even sure hopelessness at times. Uh, but by the grace of God, I'm still here. Uh, I hope that uh, my presentation uh, to you uh, really adds credence uh, to why I chose this particular topic uh, to investigate. Um, I really and truly believe that uh, African-American students uh, can do better academically. I believe there needs to be appropriate interventions in place to make that happen. I hope that what I've said here uh, enlightens you as well as others to, uh, to look into it more and, 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 and look at it in, into it with more depth. Um, uh, the findings revealed based on differentiated instruction, making learning relevant, uh, lesson planning, hands-on learning, and small groups that you know, African-American students thrive academically when they are provided with an abundance of activities that contextualize their learning. As evidenced by the narratives of my participants, African-American students seem to achieve success when lesson planning is aligned with their learning needs in mind. Uh, in addition to that, uh, teaching characteristics found most common amongst the uh, teachers uh, who successfully teach African-American students uh, illustrated how teachers not only connect with African-American students, but presented a paradigm shift with, uh, in which other teachers may be inspired to align best practices while improving upon their own cultural pedagogy. So you're looking at the high expectations, the building of, of authentic relationships, the uh, increasing their exposure, the motivating uh, African-American students, uh, the you know, growing students, uh, having the ability to grow students, uh, the care to uh, use a variety of assessments and to uh, you know, have high self-efficacy. Uh, each of those uh, combined played a role uh, in addressing the learning needs of African-American students. Um, there's no denying uh, the importance of the use of effective teaching strategies as well as uh, just having discourse over what uh, the most common characteristics shared by teachers are. Uh, the single biggest factor in the classroom is the teacher. And that's one of the things, that's one of the findings in my study as well. Uh, the quality that a child receives uh, is based on the teacher in that classroom. Uh, you know, teachers, in, in teachers entering the profession uh, may indeed lack, lack the training necessary to uh, work with this particular subpopulation. Therefore, uh, having evidence-based best practices along with an added professional uh, development uh, seminar or staff development training uh, with an emphasis on cultural pedagogy uh, is really considered long overdue uh, for education. I would like to thank you uh, for watching my WebEx presentation. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to view this. I look forward to hearing your question. I look forward to uh, hearing your questions and responses. Thank you.